Hello, everyone, and welcome to American Idioms Part 1. This is the first video in a series that I'll be doing on American idioms. In each video, I'll be explaining five common American idioms. I'll give you a chance to guess the meanings of these idioms first, and then I'll give you the answers with a short explanation and another example to help you. But before we get to the main part of the video, I want to talk a little bit about idioms. So, what is an idiom? Well, an idiom is a phrase or expression or just a group of words in a fixed order that has a particular meaning that is different from the meaning of each word on its own. Let me give you an example. If someone is very quiet or they're not speaking, you might ask them, has the cat got your tongue? Has the cat got your tongue? The person who uses this idiom is not asking about a cat actually grabbing the tongue of somebody and stopping them from speaking. It's just a funny way to ask them, why are you quiet? So the idiom has a figurative meaning and not a literal meaning. And this is why these expressions are difficult for non-native speakers. They are very cultural, and native speakers use them all the time. So, are you ready to guess the meaning to the first one? Here we go. The example is, don't worry about washing your car right now. You've got bigger fish to fry, like getting the engine fixed. Now, try to guess the meaning. And the answer is B, to have more important things to take care of. This idiom is more about priorities. And in our example, getting the engine fixed took a priority over washing the car. It was more important than washing the car. So that was the bigger fish to fry, in a sense. Let's take a look at another example. I'm not worried about going on vacation right now. I've got bigger fish to fry at work. Again, something is more important than something else. So the vacation in this example was something that the man wanted to do, but he had more important things to do at work. He had bigger fish to fry there. Okay, let's take a look at number two. Let's look at our example. We ate dinner very quietly last night, and no one wanted to mention the elephant in the room about the news that my sister had been expelled from school yesterday. Try to guess the meaning. And the answer is C, to intentionally ignore an obvious fact. So the people that were sitting down to eat dinner didn't want to talk about this thing that happened to the sister of the family where she was expelled from school. That was the elephant in the room. They intentionally ignored this obvious fact that they all knew. And here's another example. The fact that our company was in grave financial trouble was the elephant in the room at our last board meeting. In this example, the people at the board meeting didn't want to talk about their grave financial trouble, which means that they were in a lot of trouble, which was obvious to everyone. So that was the elephant in the room that everybody intentionally ignored. All right, so that's what it means by having an elephant in a room. Okay, let's take a look at number three. Let's look at our example. Business was great last month, 
but I smelled a rat when I noticed that the profits reported for the month were very low. Try to guess the meaning. And the answer is A, to get a sense that there is a problem. To smell a rat, that's exactly what it means, that you know or get a sense of there's a problem. You smell something bad. So the person knew something was wrong. They could sense it. And that's how we use to smell a rat. That's what it means. And here's another example. The price we paid for that company was very low. Was there a big problem that they were hiding? I'm beginning to smell a rat. In this example, a company was buying another company and it was maybe lower than they thought that it was worth. So they smelled a rat. They sensed that there was trouble somewhere. And that's what to smell a rat means. All right, let's move on to number four. Let's look at our example. The new employee that was just hired quit after his first week. I knew our manager had dropped the ball when he hired him. Try to guess the meaning. And the answer is B, to make a big mistake. That's what to drop the ball means. So the manager made a big mistake when he hired this new employee. That's what to drop the ball means. And here's another example. Sam really dropped the ball when he forgot to pick up his grandfather at the airport yesterday. This is a big mistake, right? Sam, in this example, forgot to pick up his grandfather. He made a big mistake. He dropped the ball. That's how it's used. All right. And here's the last one, number five. Let's look at our example. My boss never wants the details for any proposal that I give her. She only wants the bare bones. Try to guess the meaning. And the answer is C, a very basic or essential part of something. That's what bare bones means. She only wants the basic essential part of whatever I give her. That's what this means in this example. Okay, and that's what it means by the bare bones of something. And here's another example. The president never asks about each line of the budget. He only wants the bare bones of it. So in this example, the president is only looking for the essential part of the budget, which probably the presidential budget for the country is probably very, very big and complicated. But the president just wants the bare bones, the essential parts of the budget. All right. That's all for this video. As I said in the beginning, this is just the first video in this American Idiom series. There are many more to come. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And remember what I always say, keep practicing. See you next time.